Hello and welcome. My name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects. Audio visualizers let us see what's happening in a piece of music and using these visualizers to create video content for more audio based material, such as podcasts or showing off your music tracks is a very popular and requested effect. And in this exercise, we're going to be using the Boris Effects Beat Reactor found in the Continuum plugin set and Adobe After Effects to create up our visualizers. So let's start off in After Effects. I have my piece of music, which is this one here. And let's just open up the waveform and let's see that there. In fact, let's have a little playthrough on that. It's a nice piece of music to use for this example because it uses a variety of different frequencies that are going to show up quite nicely. But of course, this could be any music at all or even spoken word. So the first thing to do is create a new solid that we're going to put our beat reactor effect on. And I will call this solid beat reactor. And it's going to be the comp size for now. Hit OK. And let's come up now and add our beat reactor effect. The beat reactor filter is found in the BCC time category, but the beat reactor itself is a module that's included in a lot of other continuum filters. This means once you learn how to use the beat reactor once, you can use it wherever you want to. And we have a separate tutorial all about the beat reactor if you want to take a look at that. But for now, I'm just gonna add the beat reactor effect to my solid and let's come over to the effect controls. So the first thing I have to do is choose a host layer. This is what the beat reactor is gonna be looking at. And this is gonna be the get up AIF. And this is what it gives us. Hang on, let's uh, just turn off the music for now, just so we can see what that's gonna be looking like. There we go. So we have our bass frequencies at the left-hand side, mids in the middle, and our treble over on the right. And they're all different colors here, lovely. And if we go up to channel, we can look at the left channel only, the right channel only, or a mix of both channels. And in this case, I don't think we're going to have too big a difference between these two. So I think I'm just going to stick with mixed. If we open up the audio spectrum options, we can check out the frequency resolution here. Now, this is looking pretty cool. Uh, it gives us a, a variety of, of frequencies, and this might actually be all you need, depending on the effect that you want. But we could take this frequency all the way up to 1028. So we get a much smoother set of frequencies here. It also takes a little bit longer to render this out. So we're smoothing those away. So I'm going to find a midpoint. Actually, we'll take uh, 256. So this gives us like quite a lot of nice frequencies, but it's still fairly zippy to, uh, to render through. There we go, lovely. And we can even change things up like the scale. So if uh, we come to the, the loudest bit of the music, which is probably around about here for the for the bass, I can scale this up a little bit so that we have, there we go, so we have our peaks actually peaking out up at the top here. And if we want to boost up or bring down certain areas, then we can do that as well. So for example, my trebles are usually pretty low in this particular piece of music, so I'll boost up my trebles just a little bit so we get a nice uh, mountain pattern there. It's important, obviously, not to boost these up so everything looks exactly the same. Because if we did that, then when it comes to actually creating the visualizer, we're not going to be getting a very representative or interesting looking effect. Just boost those up a little bit so we've got a little bit more of the blues and we're not kind of just completely drowned out by the reds over in the bass. And at the bottom here, we can set our minimum frequency in Hertz and our maximum frequency. If you're working with music, this maximum frequency can often go up a lot higher because when this is mixed, they're generally mixed with a, a greater frequency range in mind. If we're dealing with something like the spoken words, so if you're just doing a visualizer for a podcast or a telephone call or something like that, then we can take our maximum and minimum frequencies down and really sort of compress the frequency ranges that we're looking at. So probably something between, you know, maybe 200 and 2000, something like that. We also have smoothness. So we can smooth these out, take the smoothness too far up. We get more a, a sort of 
tiny hill than a series of mountains. And if we take the smoothness all the way down to zero, we get very narrow peaks. So I think there's a, there's a nice happy medium to, to be found here somewhere. Because we're working at quite a fine frequency resolution, the 256, I'm going to keep my smoothness down to, to two here. I think that's going to be just fine. Now, usually when you're using Beat Reactor, you're using it to drive other effects. So this is why we have our sampler here. So we, we can sort of choose what effects that we're looking at. And if you see over on the right hand side, this is going to show us a, a bar graph or a meter of how much of this area is filled up. So if we bring this somewhere around about here and watch that play through, you can see when it's not got anything filled in it, the, uh, the meter has nothing in there. And when it's pretty much filled, it goes all the way to the top. So this is how we use Beat Reactor to drive other effects. Using things like the uh, effect output. I'm not going to worry about any of this stuff because this isn't how we're going to be using Beat Reactor in this example. And in fact, we're going to use this graph itself to either be our visualizer or to be an important part of the visualizer later. So having this sampler visible is actually going to be a bad thing for us. So what I'm going to do is just drag this off to the side so we can't see it. Cool, so let's play that back with the music. If we go back into the effect controls, I'm going to close up my uh, effects output again here. The only other thing you might want to be aware of is the delay in seconds here. Now, sometimes you might want a bit of a delay happening between your uh, actual music and the beat reactor, and you can set it up here. You can also set it up here if you're getting a lag for some reason. So if your visualizer isn't actually matching what's going on in the music, you check it out over a few seconds, make sure that's uh, that it's working right. And if it's not, you can set up the delay right here. You can see the, the drums are actually going in time properly. So everything's looking good. Right, let's pause that again and I'll turn off the music one more time. So this is now almost ready to use as the starting point for our visualizer. There's only one thing that I need to change up a little bit. And that's just an inherent part of the filter, which is over on the right hand side the meters that we were looking at earlier. Now, obviously we don't want these as part of our graph. Uh, these are amazingly useful when we're using the beat reactor for what it's actually designed for, driving other effects, but not right now for what we need. So all I'm gonna do is scale these out. Now I could just scale it up a little bit like this, get those out of the way, or because we're working on a solid, we can just come into the solid settings and just set our width a bit higher. So if I get that, around about halfway in there, so about 20, 30 there. And then I'll just move my whole layer over to the, the right there. So now let's just make sure that's fitting in nicely. Yeah, that's looking good. Make sure that my beat reactor is going to the edges because if we don't have the beat reactor going to the edges, we could find that causes problems there we go. So my left edge is filled with red and my right edge is filled with blue. Perfect. So now we have the composition that we're going to use to drive the actual visualizer. Uh, and it's in get up to, I'm going to just drag that out there and clean this up a little bit. And I'm going to rename this one to Ben's beat reactor main. There we go. So let's drag this into its own composition. So I'll make up a new composition just by dragging over here and up in the project window, I'll hit return to rename this one as simple visualizer. And I'll just remember to turn on the music in the pre comp. So that the, uh, so that when we're in our main comp, the simple visualizer comp, we'd still have music if we want it. Lovely. As a starting point, there is so much stuff we can do with this. For the simple visualizer, I can just add one more effect, which is an After Effects built-in effect, which is the Distort Polar Coordinates. And if I set this from rectangle to polar, take my interpolation up to 100%, we get a little visualizer that looks like this. 
Now, there's a couple of things that are happening here. The first one is uh, we are going from the outside inwards. So we need to flip this around a little bit. And I'm going to use another continuum filter here, which is just called the fast flipper. Let's bring that above the coordinates, polar coordinates. And I'm just going to flip this vertically. There we go. That's looking nice. The only other thing we have here is we still have our line sticking out. So if I go back into my pre-comp, my Ben's Beat Reactor main, I can actually see that I still have that problem there. I think I didn't uh, didn't make this quite as big as I needed to. Maybe I'll take that to 2050 and shift that over to the right. There we go. So now we definitely have the blue on the edge there and the red on the edge there. Back into my simple visualizer. There we go. <laughs> And we have quite an interesting little effect going on there. It's quite nice. And there's other things we can do to twiddle about with this a little bit. You know, the simplest thing is I'm, I can just put a, uh, a huge glow in here. Uh, this is just the, the fast film glow that I had floating around. And that can make that look a little bit more fun as well. Or we can do something that, that seems a bit more complex to do using uh, another effect, but actually the process is fairly straightforward and it gives us a huge amount of flexibility. And this means we're gonna go into a brand new composition. So let's find my, my Beat Reactor main, let's drag that into a brand new composition here. And we're gonna add a new solid. And we are gonna be calling this BCC Particle Array. And we're gonna come up into my effects go to BCC Particles and go Particle Array 3D. I'm going to turn off visibility and the uh, the audio on the Beat Reactor for the moment, just so we can focus on what this Particle Array is doing. And I'm going to look into the uh, Effects Browser so you can see some of the things that we can do with the Particle Array. Just composite that over black. So we can create a stream of hundreds or thousands of different particles and set them up to move around, do fly throughs, all that sort of fun, fun sort of stuff. We're not gonna do that though. We're gonna do something a lot simpler. So there's two main things to our particle array 3D. There's the particles and there's the array. It kind of makes sense when you think about the name. So the array is how the particles are set up. And this is probably the most important one to look at first. So we've got the array layout, which is set up as a grid. We can set this up as a sphere or as onion spheres, random box or random sphere, which means there is no, no sort of real layout for where, the, for where our points actually are. I want something a lot more ordered though. So I'm gonna go with grid. Then in the grid, I'm gonna skip over the number of particles and come right down to the scale. And we can scale this up and down so that our array is fitting into the uh, the solid that we've got. So I'm gonna need to scale up X a bit more than the uh, the Y is there. And we also have a, a Z scale as well. In this example, I'm not gonna be using Z at all. So this number could be whatever it wants to be. It's, it's not gonna make a difference. If we come up again to the number of particles, this is how many particles are in the X, Y, and Z. So horizontally, vertically, and in depth. Now, I already said I'm not gonna use any depth, so I'm gonna take the number of particles in Z down to one. Does this have an impact on my, uh, my scale? Yes, it does. So I'm gonna just scale this back up again a little bit more. There we go, so now that properly fits in. And so at this point, I can choose how many particles that I have in X and Y. We'll revisit this as we need to. Uh, I'll just set this to something fairly, fairly good, uh, 30 by 30, there we go. So we now have our array sorted out. The next thing to do is to look at what the particles are in our array. So if I come up to particles, we can choose different sorts of shapes, including image layers, 3D spheres, 3D cylinders. Well, that looks quite nice, I'll remember that one. Uh, we can even do things like grid lines, uh, regular, just plain points, 3D cubes, all very nice. 
But I think to start with, I'm going to come down to 3D spheres. And I'm just going to change the scaling of these a little bit so they're not touching each other. You know, we've got a lot of other controls here that I'm not going to touch right now either. So this is going to be the basis for our new uh, music visualizer. Doesn't look particularly interesting right now. And that's because all of our things are lovely gray dots. Hmm. Now, the great thing about particle array is that we can drive these particles using other layers. So if I come to my particle color and change this to layer XY, and this opens up the drop down for our color layer. So we're now going to tell particle array what we want it to look at. And that's going to be Ben's beat reactor main. So that pre comp that we brought in. And let's have a look at this. Ooh. So all of a sudden we've got a nice cool visualizer that's using that underlying layer to drive our particle array. And if we look at the alpha channel there, we're only getting visible particles where we have any sort of music going or any sort of um, uh, reaction going from the beat reactor pre-comp. So if I come into my particle shapes now and change this to horizontal line, vertical lines, grid lines, we can get, you know, a huge variety of different, different looks now, just using that same drive. Uh, I might stick with the uh, 3D planes is, is pretty classic. I might just stick with the 3D discs though. And even with this, we can change up things like the shape character. So I can make my 3D discs into little 3D donuts. So hopefully already you can start to see there's a few different possibilities now. Even if I just come up to uh, to something like my, my simple visualizer and just steal the fast flipper and polar coordinates here and just copy those in. Come back to my other thing and just paste those on top. So I've got a, a different looking visualizer there already. Uh, we don't really want to do that right now. So let's just undo that. There we go. Now, Particle Array 3D is a very deep plugin. I could literally spend hours going through different examples with it, but we're going to keep this a little bit focused. So I'm going to skip over everything here and come into the control maps. So just as we're basing the color and alpha off another layer, control maps allow us to map other things to a different layer as well. So we have something like particle size. We can either set that quickly using a uh, graph here. So across, you know, X, Y or Z axis or radial or random. If we do Y, you can see they get smaller as they go to the top. And we can do this based off of a graph. And we can even draw in the graph as well if we wanted to. Soften that up a little bit. So we can get a bit of interesting stuff going on there. Or let's set the graph to unuse. We can base this off of a layer as well. So if we come to a beat reactor, you, if we just use this layer, it doesn't make much sense to do this because our colors are always going to be the same all the way through. If I do something else here though, let's come up and make a new solid and I will call this one random clouds. I'll add another effect here, maybe something like uh, going to the BCC textures. I could do something like clouds or fractal noise and we'll come to something like noise map two. This is always a bit interesting. Uh, and let's choose oil slick. This just gives us kind of random motion going all the way through. We're not going too, too dark on this. So let's bring the reference level up just slightly. There we go. Cool. And let's bring that down to the bottom, turn it off, come back into our particle array and now base the size off of the random clouds. Now, because we've applied effect to this layer, if we don't go to uh, effects and masks, then after effects is just going to look at the source clip and the source clip is just a black solid. So it's not going to do anything. If we go to effect and masks, this gives us a little bit of life of the, uh, as the particles sort of pop in and out of size, which is, which is kind of fun. 
So control maps are always quite interesting to use. Now, if we look at the bottom here, Particle Array has Beat Reactor built into it. And with this Beat Reactor, we can be controlling things with a, uh, with a sound layer, just as we did in the regular Beat Reactor. And we can be choosing to affect lots of different parameters. We're not going to look at this in this particular exercise. This, uh, I think we'll have to save that for another time because this is a, a big rabbit hole to go down. So I'm going to turn off Beat Reactor at the bottom. So let's, let's uh, remind ourselves where we are. So we've got our particle array being driven by the Beat Reactor colors. And we also have the random clouds moving through, just giving them some sort of, uh, you know, some sort of extra life to it. This is looking good. Now we've, we've got the building blocks in place and I'm going to pre-comp this one more time. And the reason for all these pre-comps is that it actually makes our job a lot easier when it comes to uh, replacing this music with something else. So it means we can build this project once and then very, very quickly swap out the music and everything else kind of updates in process. I'm just going to come in and rename this one to uh, Ben Particle Array. Donuts. And let's put this into a new composition. Could do that just by regular pre comping, but you know, while we're up here, we might as well. And we're going to call this one 3D Visualizer 1. So let's start to do something else with this. And I'm just going to apply Layer Deformer to my Particle Array Donuts. And this becomes just a nice gray plane. Lovely. Uh, I don't want this to be a gray plane. I want this to be a gray sphere. In fact, I don't really want this to become a gray sphere at all. So I'm going to come down to my material options. And for my front texture layer, I'm just going to set this from none to Ben Particle Array Donuts. Now I have my visualizer as a 3D sphere. How do I know this is a 3D sphere? Well, let's find somewhere where we've got a lot of uh, visualization. There we go. I can come into my uh, my built-in camera here. I'm going to change my camera to an orbit, and I can just spin around my 3D sphere here. Lovely. Uh, I can even tilt it up and down even nicer. We're going to revisit this, but I need to revisit this when it's not on a black background. Because we're now at a stage where we want to start to visualize what is actually going on with this a bit uh, in a bit more detail. So let's create up a new background, a uh, new layer, new solid. Um, and we will just call this one background. And I'll make this the comp size. It doesn't matter what color we make this because I'm going to immediately change that color using generate beam i'm going to use beam as a, a sort of alternative way of getting a, a multi-color gradient so i'm going to set my length to 100 so the beam stretches all the way out i'm going to move my beam all the way to the left and the right here probably move this down again in a little bit and i'm going to make my thickness my start thickness and my end thickness very thick indeed so around about Let's say 780 on both of those. And I'll change my inside color to a just a regular white, maybe, maybe a slightly tinted, tiny, tiny bit of saturation on a, uh, a cyan. And I'll make my outside color kind of a gray there. Don't want that to drop off quite as much there. So I'm going to make this uh, bigger. And let's bring this down both on the left and on the right. So it gives us a background now that looks like it's it's got some nice bit of fall off. Uh, I might make that even, even bigger. Yeah, that's looking all right, cool. And let's bring that down underneath and we can start to do something with our, with our donuts again. Okay, so it's, it's looking a little bit dark. And the reason it's looking a little bit dark is because, as we said, it is a, a 3D object now that's going to need a little bit of lighting. So let's turn up the uh, material. Let's have a look at the built-in light that we have here. 
Uh, we have a point light, which is over here. You can see that just there, so I can drag that around, be relighting stuff. I can even bring up the ambient intensity if I still can't see what's going on there. Just bring up the uh, just the, the regular lights there. Let's get this into place and animating. So I'm just going to transform my 3D model up a little bit and we'll have it tilted just a, a, a little bit as well there. There we go. And I'm going to auto animate this around. Now, the nice thing about using the built in camera is that we do have this uh, ability just to use orbit. So that means that as we spin this around, it's just going to spin and keep spinning. Now, how do we do this animation? Well, I know that this comp is just 10 seconds long, so I could easily add keyframes here, but I don't want to do that for one simple reason is that I want this to be a template. I want this to be flexible. So if I set a keyframe for this 10 second clip, what happens when I bring in something that's two minutes, you know, 32 minutes, uh, an hour and 32 minutes, you know, I don't want to be going along and then sort of figuring out keyframes after that. So the easiest thing to do for any of these type of visualizers that you're going to be working with uh, time and time again is just set everything up using expressions. So this means no matter what the length of the composition or what the, uh, the time is going to be, if I've done the expressions right, it's just going to keep auto animating. I'm going to add an expression on orbit spin. I'm going to alt or option click on my stopwatch and that adds an expression down at the bottom. Let's bring this up a little bit so you can see this a bit uh, more clearly on the recording. And I'm just going to write a very simple expression, which is going to be time. So it means what time it is in the composition. And I'm going to go time multiplied by. Um, and then we do how fast we want this to go. Uh, let's see what 10 gives us. This might be a bit fast. I hit enter on the number pad. And that takes us away. And let's have a little look there. As that RAM previews out. I actually think that's looking all right. Let's do time multiplied by 15. And I think that's better. I think that's better. So we're going to do that. I'm a little bit concerned that when the sphere is rotated, so we, all we can see is the back of it, is that it's not lit up very nicely. So I'm gonna come up to the top here and turn on use built-in light too. Um, if we had comp lights set up in our composition, we could use those as well, but we don't, so we can't. Uh, so all I'm gonna do here is I've got my second light. I'm gonna bring this over here somewhere so we can see that. And I'm just going to change up the uh, the light Z so that it's a little bit further to the back. I'll even turn up the intensity so we can see that a bit better as well. That's that looks pretty good. <laughs> Okay, that's kind of interesting. We'll add another effect. I'm going to go to uh, BCC Stylize and come down to Reflection. I'm just going to move my Reflection Plane down. So the edge of it is just sitting on there. I, I actually really like the way we just tilted up the, um, the orb there. I think that, that gives something a little bit interesting to this. So our, our main idea is, is actually pretty good here. Uh, it's looking a little bit thin. I just, I think I'd just like to see more of this or change how this array is. So let's do that. And I'm going to go up to my composition up here, click on the thing that says 3D visualizer, the name of our comp, and I'm going to go new comp viewer. So it means we always have this comp visible over on the right hand side. That's where the comp is with the lock. And I'm going to come into my pre comp the particle array donuts over here. And let's change this up. I'm going to come into my particles and I change up the size. So now they're a bit bigger. I'm going to change up in the array. I'm going to change up the number 
in x so they're a little bit closer together maybe take the number down in y so they're not clashing and that should give me a very different look over in the uh, the right hand window if we now decide that we don't want the 3d discs if we want something like the uh, the horizontal lines and that should just update over there that's looking actually rather cool as well like that uh let's go actually let's go four grid lines and see what we get over here i'm i'm really liking that let's go back into the visualizer we'll close up that one there and let's just ram preview this <laughs> I think this is looking actually really quite interesting. I, I like I like the effect that we're getting here. And we can keep adding stuff to this and, and changing it up how you like. But I think this gives us the, you know, the, the right idea, the core of, uh, of where we can start going. So starting with just a very simple use of the Continuum Beat Reactor and then plugging that into the uh, Continuum Particle Array 3D even though we're not using the 3D capabilities of this particular particle array for this, we're getting this kind of uh, really interesting kind of cool result. And then plugging that into the layer deformer to give us a sphere that we can control either with After Effects cameras and lights or the built-in camera and light system. And because we just want a simple orbit on this, the orbiting camera that's built into that effect has been absolutely perfect for us. I hope you've learned something here, and I also hope you can see that how we can use these same basic techniques and how easy it is just to tweak up a few things and create some very different looking visualizers using the same basic setup. If you create something interesting with Beat Reactor, be sure to drop us a link in the comments. Now, the idea for this tutorial came from a previous YouTube commenter. So if you have any questions or ideas about future tutorials or an effect that you'd like to see, then just drop us a line as well. But for now, my name is Ben Brownlee for Boris Effects, and I'll see you again in another tutorial soon. Thanks for watching. To learn more about the Continuum Beat Reactor, Boris Effects Continuum, and to download a free trial, be sure to head over to the Boris Effects website, where you can find all the latest news, events, tutorials, and much, much more, all at borisfx.com.